This is Caring for Kids on News Talk 760 WJR. Presented by the Children's Foundation. And here's your host, President and CEO of the Children's Foundation, Larry Burns. Well, thank you, Mark, and good evening, everyone. This month's Caring for Kids show was recorded on the fabulous Mackinac Island during the recent Detroit Regional Chamber Policy Conference. It was a great week of networking and engaging sessions, and most of all, it was a combined effort to bring our communities together as we move forward as a united region. Hey, and speaking of moving forward, our Children's Hospital Michigan Foundation has evolved into the Children's Foundation. This new umbrella name will provide us the strategic branding platform as we expand our presence and initiatives throughout Michigan and beyond. Recently, we announced our spring grants, which included new partnerships with the Helen DeVos Children's Hospital, Michigan State University, the Homer Stryker School of Medicine at Western Michigan University, and of course, the Children's Hospital of Michigan. These new grants are not only important because of the programs they support, but they clearly indicate that we are on the move. So enjoy tonight's show, and in the future, you'll hear Caring for Kids on WJR, brought to you by the Children's Foundation. Joining us on the show tonight will be Terry Radigan, Executive Director of Communication Operations and Corporate Giving at General Motors, Ed Siage, Managing and Marketing Director for the Bank of America Private Bank, and Patty Poppy, President and CEO of CMS Energy Corporation and Consumers Energy Company. It's all coming up next on Caring for Kids, here on the great voice of the Great Lakes, News Talk 760 WJR. It's Caring for Kids with Larry Burns. Welcome back, everybody. Larry Burns here on the island at the Great Grand Hotel. Uh, and joining me now is Terry Radigan. Uh, Terry is responsible for the next phase of the transformation of the General Motors communications and corporate giving. Uh, in Terry's time with GM, he has held a number of positions, including managing safety, legal, and internal communications. Terry is a native of the Detroit area and earned a Bachelor's of Arts degree from Michigan State University. Go green. Go white. Go white. He serves on the board of the directors of the Automotive Hall of Fame and Loyola High School in Detroit, which is also one of our important partners. So, Terry, welcome to Caring for Kids. Larry, thank you very much for having me. It's, it's delightful great, to be here. It's great to have you here thank on this you. beautiful day in beautiful. Mackinac. Exactly. And, uh, so, you're our first um, guest from General Motors, so uh, welcome. What a an special honor. welcome. What an honor. Thank and, you. And you have a, uh, a dynamic and integrated role with GM. Um, tell us about your key initiatives in communications, corporate giving, and how those intersect with each other uh, and your sort of day-to-day -day activities. You're right. I do have a dual role with the with the company. I'm a career communications guy. Good. And As I so, am, yes, too. Yes, indeed. So we, we do everything from corporate communications, reactive type of media relations, but also the, the important part is we get to launch products. We get to launch cars and trucks and crossovers for a living, yeah, and that's... we're in the middle of a product onslaught that is just unprecedented. So that's an exciting part of it. So we have uh, a, a large uh, book of business with the the communication side of the right. house and then corporate giving we merged that into the into the communications function in 2017 and uh, it's proven to be a great synergy uh, the team is working on a lot of similar projects uh, requiring similar skill sets right and uh, we're just delighted to be out in, in the uh, com community Detroit, obviously, our headquarters for 108 years, so we're very proud of that. Well, but we're fortunate but also, that you're still here in Detroit. Also, Flint and Lansing yep. and Pontiac and other places where we have a large presence, and we're just doing our best to be good corporate citizens. Yeah, well, it makes perfect sense to integrate those things because it, it, when you get down to it, it's all about communicating the uh, initiatives of the organization, the products, the culture of giving back, and I was in higher ed for 27 years, and we did that in higher ed. We took siloed organizations in a big university, University of Toledo, that was marketing, communications, enrollment, and government relate, and we merged them all into one area so that we were talking to each other and we were integrating those things. So it sounds like in a much bigger way, uh, General Motors is doing that, and you're leading the way. And it's a it's a way for folks to have a cross-functional assignment without really ever leaving our function. So yeah, it's really, that, really that cool. makes perfect sense. Right. We're talking with uh, Terry Radigan, 
uh, Executive Director of Communications Operations uh, at General Motors. And so what are some of the, the current priorities of the GM Corporate Giving Program? I know that there's been some evolution there, and uh, real curious uh, to know what, what some of your current priorities are. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, we've, we've really narrowed our focus. We're, we're talking about STEM education, vehicle and road safety, okay. community development, and then hometown giving, as I mentioned, the places where we yep. have a huge presence. But it's hard to come up with too many of our initiatives that don't involve children in some way. Right. We have the vast majority of our of our corporate giving goes toward children, and obviously the STEM education piece of that, um, but also everything from you know childhood hunger. So we mm -hmm. partner with Gleaners and mm -hmm. Forgotten Harvest. We know that when when kids leave school, they also leave their best chance at getting a good good meal. Uh, so we're we're working with them. We work with the uh, city of Detroit on on a thing called Grow Detroit Young Talent, right. so that we can yes. we can put these kids to work in the off season uh, when school is out, and they earn some money, and obviously they're they're well fed and uh, they're contributing. They're yeah, and we and we've been. It's interesting because the the partners you mentioned that would be Gleaners, Forgotten Harvest, are now partners of ours at the foundation. Fantastic. Uh, as well as we've uh, employed some of the um, Grow Detroit talent interns over the summer. Uh, and so what, what our foundation now is all about is really being a community-based foundation for children and families. Uh, and so nutrition, wellness, um, education is an important factor for us. We're, we're still funding a fair amount of research, but we're really more involved now in wellness and pathways that, that it sounds like GM is doing. That's well. where it starts. Absolutely yeah. where it starts. And uh, then we're also really concerned about this, uh, this third grade literacy issue yeah. that we have. And it's just, it's pervasive. We have a partnership with, a, with an outfit called TutorMate where okay. GM employees volunteer 30 minutes a week. They get on, we get on the phone. I have a, a TutorMate partner in the second grade. His, his name is Hussein. Right. I've not yet met Hussein. I talk to him on the phone uh, or on the computer once right. a week. Uh, but I get a chance to meet him at the end of the school year on June 14th. Oh. We're going to have a pizza party. But he has made such great progress, and it's 30 minutes a week. And he, he uh, started at, I think, the B level, right. B as in boy, and right. now he's at the G level. Okay. And not only has his reading improved, but you can hear his confidence has right. improved. It makes such and a difference. It's just so important. Yeah. So we're, and we're so you have employees all over that do we this. We do. We do. And um, <laughs> another big initiative that we have that starts right now in the summer is our Student Corps program, okay. which is... Um, 12 schools in the metro Detroit area, and we have GM retirees serve as their mentors. We have uh, college students that are interns that serve as their supervisors, and then the, these teams, I think there's 15 actually, okay. and they have teams of 10, and they go into their community around their school or in the surrounding neighborhood, and they do projects. And, during the uh, summer? During the so summer. So the kids have something to do? And they are not... full GM employees, okay. right? and they put that on their resume, and they learn life skills, and they, they get a paycheck, and then the, the uh, retiree will show them how the paycheck, right. you know, for what happens from gross pay to net Right, pay. yeah, exactly. And all so the people, yeah, exactly. yeah, and, so and I'm exciting. sure they help them manage their expenses, so they don't Precisely. go and, and buy a bunch of stuff they don't need. And meanwhile, that, they're making their school grounds more beautiful yeah, for when they return. Yeah, in the that's fall. that's awesome. Um, what else do you want our listeners to know about General Motors and the evolution of the corporate giving program and your community-based um, support? You know, there's one really important piece. I mentioned vehicle and road safety yeah, being right. one of our focus. Areas. One of ours too. And you know. Um, unfortunately, traffic accidents are the leading killer of, of uh, people under 24 years right. old. And that can be attributed to, you know, to, to distracted driving. Right. It can be contributed to a lot. 94% uh, of all accidents are caused by human error. So we're working with an outfit called DoSomething.org. Okay. And do something. do something dot org okay. is, is focused on getting children to, or getting young drivers, I should say, to, uh, to buckle up and to practice safe driving habits. We have a, a scholarship that is sort of a, a carrot for them if they, uh, if they perform well, uh, potentially to get a scholarship. But really what it is is just trying to change behaviors and uh, really eradicate this epidemic that's happening in our country. Yeah. Young and, and, people are dying. Um, safety is one of our priorities. Both we we do a lot of car seat installations uh, in in a partnership with AAA and Kohl's department stores. We're in with Safe Kids as well. Safe Kids worldwide, and we've had a 20-year partnership with yeah. them because we know that most car seats are not installed correctly, and when they're not, you know the consequences. Not, yeah, can be they dire. might even be hurting versus helping. Correct. At all. Correct. So we do that, and. and uh, 
And so it sounds like you're really taking the initiative to prevent things and to have your organization engage their employees to help families, kids uh, in many different ways. We have what's called uh, Team GM Cares, and okay. it's, it's, a, it's right on our portal on our employee website. And you can go there and you can find a plethora of volunteer opportunities. And the GM family, I have to say, is so generous, not only with their money, but with their time. Yeah. And I found through the different uh, volunteer opportunities that I've taken advantage of, it's just so rewarding. We're yeah. huge into the Cody Rouge neighborhood. So we have a week dedicated to um, not only painting classrooms, but also, you know, cleaning up some of the debris and the, and the brush and things like that in the Cody Rouge neighborhood. And we partner with DTE and with uh, Skillman Foundation and and with uh, Quicken Loans in that Those are that all area. great partners. And when you go back year after year, you see sustained change. Right. Those neighborhoods. Know. I attended a breakfast this morning with Mayor Duggan, and he talked about the neighborhoods and how he remains very committed to improving. He's real happy. Downtown's doing great, but uh, the neighborhoods are, are really, really important, they particularly are. for the folks that live there. And speaking of neighborhoods and volunteering, I know you're on the board. I mentioned of Loyola High School. Yes, sir. Uh, they're one of our partners. We, uh, we provided a grant that helped uh, renovate their kitchen. So rather than uh, the, the uh, young men having lunch brought in, uh, I think they have three meals a day, that those are being prepared right there. And, and uh, it's also helping the community maybe do some skills in culinary. Uh, and so we're delighted to be a partner with Loyola. Well, thank you very much for your contribution. It's, it's uh, greatly appreciated. And, you know, Loyola is a special place. There's about 140 students there, um, all, all male. And, um, you know, they generally arrive at the school two or three grade levels behind. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to turn that around. We are very proud that nine years in a row we've had 100% college acceptance. We just uh, celebrated nine years in a nine row. Nine years in a row. All 100% of the, of the graduating seniors are accepted to college. Yeah, that's and, terrific. Um, and I know firsthand without Loyola and the, and the attention they get, most of those kids wouldn't go to college. That's probably true, yeah. And so we, uh, we're we proud of that. Uh, we're, we're saying goodbye to our, our uh, president of seven years, Father Mark Lutke. Yes, Mark's great. Who will be moving on, but uh, we're delighted to add a gentleman by the name of Dave Smith, who uh, he's a native Detroiter, right. but he moved away uh, 30 years ago, and uh, he went and had a great career with Johnson & Johnson. Right comes back to Detroit, bought a place in Brush Park, wants to give back. He and his wife are here, and he starts on July 1 in his new role as the president of That's Loyola terrific. High School. So, so it's really uh, things are looking very good for Loyola they High School for sure in the are. neighborhood. And, uh, and so uh, we'll have him on the show sometime soon. That would be fantastic. So we're talking with Terry Radigan from General Motors. And Terry, since your job is so um, integrated and diverse, what's one thing that you do or are responsible for that might surprise our listeners? Let's see. I'm in charge of uh, internal communications for all of our salaried uh, employees throughout the uh, throughout the world, and so I actually have responsibility for the um, for the, the the operations outside of of the U.S. But really employee communications, especially at a time like we're going through here with the transformation of our industry, transformation of our company, the more you can educate the uh, the employees about the, the critical factors going on in the business, the more engaged they're going to yeah. be, the more they feel like they're going to contribute. Right. And so, and uh, technology has made that a little easier to do worldwide, it I has. would think. So, it has. Uh, everyone, just about everyone has a smartphone, either company issued or their own. And so there's a ton of ways for uh, employees to get critical information uh, about the business uh, through their handheld device. Yeah, and and I, I have a General Motors car, and I love the app that uh, tells me when I need service, uh, how my tires are, how much gas I have. I can start my car remotely. I mean, it, it's just awesome, and I love the vehicle, too. Thank so, you very much. Terry, we thank you very it. much for being on Larry, Caring for Kids. Larry, it is my pleasure. And uh, we're going to have you back and, uh, and keep our listeners posted on the great work General Motors and yourself are doing. Thank you for everything you do for the community. Well, it's, it's my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. That was Terry Radigan. Executive Director of Communication Operations and Corporate Giving at GM. And coming up next, we'll hear from Ed Siage, Managing Director and Marketing Director at Bank of America Private Bank. When Caring for Kids continues, here on the great voice of the Great Lakes, News Talk 760 WJR. Welcome back to Caring for Kids on WJR. Presented by the Children's Foundation. Right now I have Ed Siaj as a Managing Director and Marketing Director with Bank of America Private Bank. Uh, in his role, Ed leaves efforts in investment management, trust and estate planning services, credit and banking, and philanthropy. Very important to us. 
Uh, Ed's extensive financial knowledge contributes to his ability to devise thoughtful strategies that capitalize on available resources, all the while advancing long-term priorities for his clients who always come first. Absolutely. Uh, Ed earned his undergraduate degree and his master's degree in international business and finance from the University of Michigan. Ed, welcome to Caring for Kids. Thank you for having me, Larry. It's an absolute pleasure. It's our pleasure. And uh, so one of the things that uh, that I'm learning about your organization and about your role is how many services you provide to nonprofit organizations like the Children's Hospital Michigan Foundation. Uh, and recently, we had one of your colleagues come in and talk to our board about our um, spending policy, which was great. Uh, and so tell our listeners about some of the services, because we don't have enough time for all of them. Right. Uh, but some of the services offered to nonprofits by Bank of America Private Bank. Thank you for the opportunity, Larry. Yes, I'd love to. Um, so, you know, obviously we're a bank, so we do all the normal, right, banking and services that anybody would need uh, to manage their finances. But I think what sets us apart is we have over a 200-person dedicated team in the nonprofit institutional space. Yeah, right. That's just an army of people. Right. And and each person has got deep expertise in their ability to really help with everything from board governance to staff development to strategic planning to spending policy to asset allocation. And it's all about helping the nonprofit achieve their mission because that's the ultimate goal. But you know, before you get to the dollars and cents and how it all works, you really got to have all the right governance and spending policies right. and things are necessary. And so, again, what makes us kind of different is we help with those things and the planning around that. And the numbers and the dollars and everything are then allocated to achieve those goals. Right. And so one of the things I was most impressed with uh, prior to the trustee retreat we had is all the homework that you and your colleagues did about our foundation to have a complete understanding of, because we've changed a lot. Right. Uh, from what we were uh, years ago. So what are our priorities? What are our policies? Who are our donors? Uh, and so that really impressed me that, that you and your colleagues did that homework so that when you, when you spoke to our board, it was based on all that knowledge. Right. And so uh, that obviously is something you guys do well and do often. Absolutely. I mean, every nonprofit's different. Every mission is different. So in order to craft the right plan, right, you got to understand the organization and what they're trying to achieve. And that's where we spend our yeah, time. Yeah, that's. I was really impressed with that. And so Thank we're you. talking with Ed Siaj, Managing Director, Marketing Director, Bank of America, Private Bank. Tell our listeners also about this, um, particularly those that might be a board member of a nonprofit or work at a nonprofit, about how you... Um, sort of organize what a nonprofit needs and then pull in people from all over the country, right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Well, first, it's about understanding the nonprofit right. and what are their challenges and really having a conversation with the leadership team of that nonprofit and some of the board, key board members, obviously. And then once we understand what they're faced with, that's where we kind of go back and say, okay, where are the experts that we have in our company that, are, that understand this, that have done this for years, that have the knowledge, put them on a conference call, have them understand the information, the, the mission, the, the organization, where we need the help, and then we come back out with all the information to deliver that to the board or the leadership yeah, team. Good, and you did it so well with us. So if somebody's out there listening uh, and they want to contact uh, you for those services, what's the best way to do that? Uh, either give us a phone call. We can okay. definitely do that, and that's 248-631-0572. All right, we'll list that on our website. Yeah. Or uh, just shoot me an email okay. at, at periodsiage at bankofamerica.com, right, bova.com. Awesome. So I highly recommend that. Yeah. So now talking more about you, Ed Siage, uh, you also serve as chair of the Governance and Nominating Committee right. for the United Way here in Detroit. Not here on Mackinac, but yeah. in Detroit. Yeah. Uh, what goals and objectives do you have moving forward as it relates to that committee for our United Way? So, um, you know, really it's for me, it's about connecting uh, the staff and the board together to really leverage that relationship and strengthen it. Uh, I think that's a big deal. I think a lot of times nonprofit boards and staff, uh, there isn't the communication and the leverage there that needs to necessarily happen. So I'm spending a lot of time on that. Yeah, that's critical because I work for a board mm -hmm. of roughly 35 people, so 35 bosses. Right. 
And so that communication is really critical Absolutely. to not only the organization doing well, but to my well-being. <laughs> Absolutely. And then, you know, the other big objective is obviously building the right board, right? Having the diversity, yes, diversity. Uh, that you need, uh, having the right people in the room, uh, people that want to roll up their sleeves and be involved, uh, because that's critical as well. So I'd say those are the two biggest bullet points in so that space. So the engagement with the board, communicating, and then having a diverse board. We're, Absolutely. we're working very hard at the... Uh, Children's Foundation on uh, having a diverse board, both yeah. in geography right. uh, and in talent uh, and in uh, demographics of the individuals. Of so course. It's all important. So one of the things, we're talking with Ed Siage from Bank of America, private bank. Um, I know, and getting to know you, you're a very proud lifetime resident of Dearborn, Michigan. I am. Uh, and tell us about some exciting things going on in your hometown. What's going on? I drive by all the time, and yeah. I see... Uh, new restaurants, new things going on. Absolutely. My good buddy Alexander Zanchek has yeah. weekly concerts in the summer. Yeah, right. Uh, and so tell us what's going on in your hometown. So I, I love the city of Dearborn. Uh, there's a ton of stuff going on from, as you said, small businesses popping up everywhere. Uh, Ford Motor Company is doing some amazing development right downtown. Uh, West Mich or West Dearborn in, on Michigan Avenue has really become a great hot spot for restaurants and bars and things like that just to hang out at. Um, what also is impressing me uh, is, is really the infrastructure work that's going on. Uh, the neighborhood streets, the sewer systems are all getting upgraded and changed. Uh, and it's a very diverse town. Uh, so it's just a lot of fun just to see it coming alive a little bit more uh, yeah. generally. And uh, it's been a great place to live. Yes. Great place to live, yeah. work, play. We got all it. All those things. Yeah. So now what else do you want our listeners to know about uh, the work you do and the other great work that your colleagues do at Bank of America? Absolutely. Thanks for that, Larry. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're a bank that... Uh, wants to take care of the communities that we live, work, and play at, as you said. Yeah. And so we're very involved in our communities. We're very involved locally. Uh, we have all the business lines here in Michigan uh, that, you know, small business, middle kind of market business, um, you know, investment management, uh, all those banking services. And you services. also have a pretty large, this is a question, a yeah. large healthcare practice, right? Absolutely. Yeah, Mr. So Bob Cruz Bob runs Cruz, that. That's yeah, right. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. It runs a great healthcare practice. We call him the practice. Cruiser. There you yeah. go. There you go. So, uh, we, you know, we have a team that's dedicated to be here, that lives here, uh, that cares about their community, and obviously we have the power of Bank of America to, yeah. to help support us. So, yeah, so uh, well, thank you. For, thank you. Uh, I want to formally thank you for the work that uh, Bill and, and you and others did at our retreat. It was the start of a great conversation with our board, uh, and thank you for the support of the foundation that you've provided, and I look forward to uh, continuing those discussions. Well, thank you. It was absolutely our pleasure, and the great work you guys are doing. Keep it going, because we're here to help. That's anyway. our plan. We're going to yeah. keep doing it and doing it for a long, long time. That was Ed Siage, Managing Director and Marketing Director at Bank of America Private Bank. Coming up next, we're going to hear from Patty Poppy, President and CEO of CMS Energy Corporation and Consumers Energy Company. When Caring for Kids continues right here on the great voice of the Great Lakes, News Talk 760 WJR. Welcome back to Caring for Kids on WJR. Presented by the Children's Foundation. Once again, here's Larry Burns. Welcome back, everyone. Larry Burns here for Caring for Kids Mackinac 2019 edition. And uh, our last guest for today is Patty Poppy. Patty is president and chief executive officer of Jackson, Michigan-based CMS Energy and its principal subsidiary, Consumers Energy. Before returning to her hometown of Jackson, to join Consumers Energy in 2011, Patty held a variety of automotive manage management positions at General Motors and served as power plant director at Detroit-based DTE Energy. Patty earned a master's degree in management from the Stanford University Graduate School of Business and received a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in industrial engineering from Purdue University. Go Boilermakers. Oh, boiler up. Yes, indeed. In her role, Patty is focused on connecting the company more closely with its customers and adapting lean operating system principles throughout the utility. Patty, welcome to Caring for Kids. Larry, thank you for having me. I can't think of a better topic than Caring for Kids. Well, thank you. And uh, I know you're extremely busy. You're, you're a chairperson of this great conference. Mm. So uh, you're the busiest person on the island. So taking the time to talk. I don't know. I think uh, Governor Whitmer might, might be, be a little busy. <laughs> busy uh, it's a toss up. <laughs> uh, and so we're in the spring, late spring. It's actually uh, nice here. 
Uh, and so it's graduation time for uh, high schools, colleges, and so as a, as a CEO, um, what advice do you have for young people graduating, and particularly young women graduating? Any wisdom? Well, funny you should ask, okay, Larry. Right? I had the privilege of speaking at my daughter Margaret's college graduation from the University of Michigan really? this spring, yes, from the engineering school. Wow. And uh, so I gave three little pieces of advice okay. to the graduates. All right, one. This was uh, mom advice with a CEO twist. All right, I like it. Number yeah. one. Can't say go wrong with that <laughs> exactly. combination. Who's going to argue yeah. with me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, number one, say please and thank you. Specifically. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Specifically, <laughs> that means um, ask people to share with you what they know and then thank them when they do. Right. Because we're not done learning because we're just graduating. Right, right. We're gonna be just, lifelong learners. Yeah, absolutely. Second, eat your peas. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, Larry, I don't like peas. Okay. They're not my yeah. favorite. In fact, I don't like them at all. And so the point of saying eat your peas is to tell everyone to do the tough stuff. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not the easy route that makes you most prepared for the biggest impact right. that you can have. And sometimes the biggest impact you can have is by doing the tough stuff. Yeah. And building resilience. And building resilience and learning. You learn yeah. with failure, you That's learn right. with challenge, you learn by working hard. And so encourage people to eat their peas. Eat their peas. I like it. And then finally, stand up straight. Okay. All these college graduates and the, the spring graduates I would offer, they deserve to. They've right. achieved something extraordinary. We're proud of them. Stand up straight. Trust yourself. Believe in yourself That's when great. you walk in any room. If you walk in, especially for so, this is for the young women. Mm -hmm. I remember early in my career being in positions where there were very few women around me. Right. And if I had walked into those rooms with a little bit of a slouch, wondering, do I belong? Then they were surely not going to think no, I they did. They would have read that right away. Exactly. So you stand up straight, you walk in there, and you believe first right. Right. that you so belong. Very important. And then others will jump right on board. People yeah. will welcome you with open arms, yes. but you've got to believe in yourself They'll first. You well as well. You bet. That's great. I'm going to remember those three there things. There you go. Yes. From a mom and a CEO. We're talking with Patty Poppy, who is the president and CEO of CMS Energy Corporation and Consumers Energy Company. So let's talk about CMS Energy. What is really exciting that you want our listeners to know about? Well, in terms of serving children, I can't think of anything better than having a planet mm -hmm. that will serve them for their lifetimes. Right. And so we are very committed to thwarting climate change by taking aggressive actions to transition to cleaner and leaner renewable energy. Um, we have been leaders, seen as leaders globally. Newsweek magazine actually picked us as one of the top ten greenest companies in the nation. In the nation. Flanked by Apple and J&J &J yeah, on the list. I mean, company. it's uh, surprising sometimes to Michigan uh, residents to know what leaders consumers energy is, especially those in southeastern Michigan who think of us as the gas company for the rest of the state right. or the electric company. Right. Yeah. And so we're transitioning to cleaner energy that both reduces carbon. We've reduced our carbon emissions by 38%. Oh. Uh, well ahead of any kind of mandates uh, or regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, and that also then allowed us to save water and waste to landfills. And uh, we've got a short-term goal to restore 5,000 acres of land in Michigan to natural habitat. Okay. But a longer-term wow. goal of adding 6,000 megawatts of solar uh, here in Michigan, which is like 59 square miles of solar panels uh, to serve the people of Michigan with a clean and affordable energy system. Yeah, well, that's an awful lot and so diverse in what you're doing for the community now and maybe more importantly for the future for, yeah. for children. And It's a long game. Yeah, excellent. So I also know that you're involved with the CMS Energy Foundation. And as I did uh, preparation for this interview, I noticed that our foundation and your foundation um, have very similar interests right now in things such as social welfare, community development, and education. Uh, and so tell our listeners a little bit about the foundation and the, the things that you're most proud of right now. You know, our foundation is certainly our giving arm, and we're so proud to align our foundation with our triple bottom line. You know, some companies work to strictly the bottom line. We think that it's more sustainable and better business to stand for a triple bottom line of serving people, planet, and prosperity. Not just profit, but right. people, right. planet, and prosperity. And so our foundation giving is uh, aligned around that. And this idea that we can contribute to education, uh, one of the Excite. There's two areas of focus on education that really get me fired up. One is our uh, type one, uh, talent pipeline management academy. We've been training community leaders across the state to apply um, uh, supply chain methods 
to the Talent Pipeline Challenge for okay. businesses across the state. So through our foundation, we partnered with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Okay. It's a nationally designed program. We're the first state to have it available. 200 different companies and 13 communities have participated in our workshops to help prepare local communities to communicate, business leaders to communicate to their education institutions in their local area for the needs that they see in the future. Yeah, so it's so really important. predicting the demand. Yeah. And you, you know, so many community colleges and local colleges are designing new programs because they think that's what right, we need. Right. And then we come and say, oh, no, no, this is what we need. Yeah. And so if you can get that aligned, the local education institutions are ready and willing yeah. and want to be on board. Right. We just didn't tell them. They have to know. I was in higher ed for 27 years and uh, at the University of Toledo, University of Akron. Mm -hmm. And you're so right that, that educational institutions need to reach out. In your case, you're doing mm -hmm. it for them mm -hmm. and finding out what, what are your needs. Mm -hmm. And so we can prepare uh, young people, for the most part, for those needs versus guessing or just assuming that you need engineers. Exactly. You know? uh, and I what, need, you yeah. know, IT specialists. Well, actually, we need uh, hardware specialists who are going to, install smart grid right. devices on the grid. We yes. actually need those guys. We yes. don't have any of those technicians. They need to listen to you so they can solve your problems for you. And then we partner together because yeah. then they solve our problem. You get scholarships, you get yeah. things. That, so that's that's brilliant. The other thing that the foundation is very engaged in that I really get excited about is our FIRST Robotics relationship. Okay. FIRST Robotics is a, a globally recognized uh, K through 12 uh, robotics uh, environment that was formed because so many times our young people grow up revering athletes right. art and, and performing artists and they don't realize that the people to be revered are our scientists and technologists. So they've created this environment that's athletic-like. It's in a stadium, there's music, there's competition, there's time, it's awesome. And, and They become rock stars. Oh, they're good. total rock stars. They have a stadium full of people cheering them on right. with their robot. And this is and high school? This is high school, yeah. and actually there's pre-K, K, and uh, K through 12 right. programming. And uh, we host here in Michigan the world championship. Yeah, I'm familiar. I hear on Paul W. Robots. Smith, he yes. always talks about it. I know it. Which is great. It's great. So we at Consumers are very, very supportive. Uh, one of the top supporters in the state uh, for all FIRST Robotics. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So as chairman of this conference, 2019 Mackinac Conference, um, what's your takeaway? What's the, is there a general sense of how things are going? Not so much at the conference, but in our state and with these important people here on Mackinac? You know, I think this our overarching theme of One Michigan would, it would be a blessing if we could truly internalize the concept of One Michigan. While the rest of the world is more divided than ever, for us in Mi Michigan to demonstrate that we can unite, that doesn't mean that we have to have, you know, everyone has to think the same. Right. In fact, because we have diversity of thought, we can have better, more creative solutions that will last and we can demonstrate what united we can do that builds on our diversity of thought, yet brings us together to deliver for the future generations. Yeah, and I, I sense that, and it certainly has happened in the Detroit metro area with suburbs and regions, but to, to have it happen in the state uh, would be and is very, very powerful. Now is the time. You know, there's a saying that might be appropriate for your listeners. The one generation plants the trees that the future generations will enjoy the shade. Yes. And exactly. so as we think about the children of Michigan, right. what could be more important than the grown-ups to come together, tackle the tough stuff, and prepare the soil and create the environment where our young people can thrive and grow and prosper for generations yeah, to come. that's what our foundation is all about now. Love it. So one last question. So you're back in your hometown of Jackson, correct? Yes, sir. And how are things in Jackson? Jackson is awesome. You know, I left for 20 years and came back. And uh, I think um, my fellow residents were a little down in the dumps with themselves, yeah. you know, a little uh, self-esteem challenge. Right. They needed to stand up straight right. and believed <laughs> that there's something special right. about Jackson. They and, ate their peas. They yeah, were ready for and, it. And they're ready. So we're uh, actually launching a smart energy district in Jackson. We did a global request for uh, concepts from the best and brightest technology companies around the world to demonstrate our clean energy plans, our 20-year plan right now. So we're uh, going long on clean and lean energy in Jackson, That's building true. on other development activities that are happening there. We've got a lot of momentum. 
That's and uh, it's a great place to be. There was a groundbreaking a couple of weeks ago in Jackson for a, um, a long-term recovery community called Andy's Place. Okay. And that the governor was there. And this is for, we're, we're now involved in helping young people and not so young people who have developed an opioid uh, mm. addiction. Mm. And so mm. the first long-term recovery center is going to be in Jackson. I did not know that. It's called Andy's Place. Andy was a young man who died of an overdose. His dad created something called Andy's Angels. Uh, and so we're hoping to have the second center in the Detroit area uh, in the name of Jamie Daniels. We, we run the Jamie Daniels Foundation for Ken Daniels and his family. Outstanding. So uh, trying to help these people from all walks of life and all socioeconomic backgrounds that, uh, that have this addiction problem. It, so. it, you know, it's a disease like any other. It, it needs is. to be it's, treated it's, yes. as such. So Jackson is leading the way. Wow, so that's so know great that. to know. Yes. Thank so, you. You're welcome. So thank you very much for doing this show. Uh, when you're chairman of the conference and for all the great work that you're doing and that uh, CMS Energy is in great hands uh, for the state and the country and the world. Thank you, Larry. Patty great to Poppy, be with you. Thank you very much. That was Patty Poppy, president and CEO of CMS Energy Corporation and Consumers Energy Corporation. Coming up next, I'll introduce you to this month's little champion and also provide an update on some foundation news. Stay tuned here on the great voice of the Great Lakes, News Talk 760 WJR. It's Caring for Kids with Larry Burns. This portion of Caring for Kids is dedicated to highlighting a little champion. The Little Champion program honors children who have overcome major obstacles in their young lives and continue to tackle those challenges each and every day with a smile. This month's Little Champion is seven-year-old Jake from Gross Point Woods, Michigan. In October of 2018, Jake was diagnosed with a cancerous brain tumor. He endured five surgeries, six rounds of chemo, seven blood transfusions, and an array of daily challenges. But despite such tough circumstances, Jake has maintained his fighting spirit, kind heart, and big smile, proving that there's no challenge too hard for a little champion. Congratulations, Jake, this month's little champion. Wanted to give you some updates on some things going on regarding the foundation, the Children's Foundation. Uh, this is a big week for golf fans in the city of Detroit and the whole country at the Detroit Golf Club as it welcomes the Rocket Mortgage Classic for the very first time. Golf tournament featuring some of the sport's biggest stars, the Children's Foundation is a proud partner of this wonderful new event. And on Saturday, June 29th, the Children's Foundation is partnered to present the National Flag Football's Charity Flag Football Tournament at the Big House at the University of Michigan. We hope you'll come by and enjoy a day of flag football in support of the health and well-being of children. And for more information, visit www.nationalflagfootball.com. We've got a lot going on at the Children's Foundation. We hope to see you soon. Thanks for joining us tonight on Caring for Kids. The Children's Foundation, yep, you heard me right, the Children's Foundation, is proud to sponsor this program, and we hope you enjoy tonight's episode. For more discussion about the health and wellness of children, join us next time here on The Great Voice of the Great Lakes, News Talk 760 WJR. Caring for Kids with Larry Burns on WJR has been presented by the Children's Foundation.